was like, why do you, why do you love a kid when it f***s itself? <laughs> Literally, it stinks of You still love it unconditionally. Why can't you love yourself when you metaphorically yourself? So this is my mushroom, my first ever mushroom experience. I'm going to explain exactly what happened and I've also got video proof of what was going on, what was going through my head at the moment in time because it was a crazy experience and I don't even recommend everyone does it to be honest with you. Magic mushrooms, psilocybin, shrooms, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter what you want to call it, it alters your brain, it alters your everything that's going on, it alters your reality and it takes you somewhere else. It takes you out of this current reality. A really good way to explain what can happen with different doses, I'm not an expert, but I watched a video explaining the different doses, amounts, and how it feels to you. So I only did 1.5 grams, and they, the guy was saying about one to two grams, give or take, somewhere between there, is like you can peer in with your head underwater, but you can take your head out at any moment in time if it gets scary, if you don't like it you have the ability to come back to this reality, whatever this reality is. When you start taking more, you're then under the water and you can't get out. When you start having sort of like a hero dose or a monster dose, which is five grams plus, that's when you're at the bottom of the ocean, there's no way out and what you're being shown that you, you, you can't have anything else, that is it. And my experience was nothing like that. I only did 1.5 grams, but I had a beautiful experience and I do definitely recommend it to some people, but not to everyone. So don't just go and watch one video and think, oh, I need to do magic mushrooms because you don't actually need to. That's why I do hypnosis, because what happened on the mushrooms was I had so many revelations and because my emotions were so high, I remember everything that happened. You can get the exact same thing with hypnosis, so you don't need to do mushrooms. But if you feel like you're drawn to it, just like I was, because I wasn't going to do it, I didn't want to do it, but I felt drawn to it, so that's why I did it. So what actually happened when I first took the mushroom? So when I first took it, I literally ate an actual, it was an actual mushroom. I'll see if I can find a picture of it and if I can. I'll put it here. It's a dried mushroom. You eat it, it tastes disgusting. It doesn't taste it doesn't taste nice. So I'm just washing it down with some drink. Me and my friend, we sort of just decided, oh, do you want to go to the beach? And this was like about 20 minutes after we actually started eating the mushroom. So we walked to the beach and where we were in Mexico, we were very far from the beach that I wanted to go to. I started to feel a bit weird. And when I did ayahuasca, and if you haven't seen my ayahuasca documentary, check this one up here. When I did ayahuasca, I had the worst possible experience at that time, but it gave me so much. It was so scary that I was actually very scared and anxious and worried and nervous going into the mushroom. When I started to feel weird, I, I was walking down the street, walking down Fifth Avenue in Mexico in Playa del Carmen, going like this with my hands. And whenever I go like this now, it just brings me so present. It makes me so present. And it's literally anchored in to just be present. Just take a breath. Just because I was doing it, and it was probably a comforter, because at the moment in time, I was a bit nervous. Like, oh, should I have done this? Is something crazy gonna happen? I'm not too sure. Oh, I'm a bit worried, I'm a bit nervous here. And we were walking down and because there was a lot of music, there was a lot of people, there were so many people. My shorts were bright orange as well. So I started to kind of like, my, my, I had hypersensitivity. I could see bright colors, I could hear really loud noises. I could feel things. When I had water on my hands from the drink that I had, like, because it was so cold, it didn't feel like water. I can't explain how it felt. It just felt very, very, very weird. So me and my friend Matteo, we ended up continued walking. And Matteo is a guy that I met here in Playa del Carmen. He's from Italy, but he literally messaged me three days after I came here and was like, oh, I'm coming to Playa del Carmen. I was like, let's meet. And just the day before he left is when we did the mushroom. And what happened was we walked to the beach and it started off sort of the way that, the way that we are as human beings as well. And we're both in business. He's in the fitness industry. I'm, in, I'm obviously a hypnotherapist and all this kind of stuff. So we're in the coaching industry. So we do the same similar, th well, we do a similar thing. We both have that never quit attitude. And this is exactly how our trip started. We started to walk and we walked to this part of the beach and I was like, no, it's not the right bit of the beach. We need to be over there. And the bit was probably about two miles away, I would say. Maybe two miles. Maybe I'm exaggerating, I don't know. I'd say it's two miles. And we started to walk and we would get close and I'd be like, oh, should we sit here? And we both looked at each other like, no, it's not the right place. And I just kept saying, I was like, I've, I've got to be there. I don't know why something is saying I need to be over there. So we continued walking, continued walking, and we eventually got there. And when we got there, it was like we completed the quest and we got there. That was what we were saying. That's how, because you're in that trippy state, like it was like we completed the quest and we could sit down and we could just, and that's what, I don't know, that's what a real success felt like. We really got to where we wanted to be. After a while, we started to really, I started to really feel it. And I started to, literally see the makeup of the universe. I started to see the makeup of the sky. And the only way I can explain it is, if you've ever seen a soccer ball, a football, um, a soccer ball, if you're from America, it's got like the hexagons on it. That's what the sky was made of. It was made of loads of individual hexagons that make up this planet. 
and I was looking at it, I was like, that is insane how the, how the planet is made up, what the planet is made of. And it really sort of, I just sort of sat there for a minute, I was just admiring nature and I was just laying down, looking up at the sky, just admiring the world that we live in and how blessed we are to live in this world. And then all of a sudden I closed my eyes and when I closed my eyes, I started to like fall down the tunnel and I started to, it was like I was falling and twisting and all of this was happening. I, I, I can't explain it, I was falling and twisting. There was a lot of yellows. It was black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. It was a lot of black and yellow. Ironically, that is a lot of my branding whenever I do anything. I do a lot of black and gold with stuff. It looks sleek, that's what I think at least. I started to, sl it was like I was going down a tunnel and then all of a sudden, I, Mateo started talking and I sort of came out of it and I was like, it was like I was being invited. I think I just said that, it was like I was being invited to understand the construct of the universe. What is it made of? How does the universe work? Like all of this. And when I came back out, I was one, and there's a part of me that was scared to go in, if I'm being honest. But the other part of me was sort of like, it, it, it's not necessary. I don't need to. I don't need to understand that to live here right now, because either way, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to live here. I'm going to go to the toilet, I'm going to eat food, I'm going to have a shower. All of these normal things that we do in everyday life doesn't actually matter if I understand how the universe was created or what is going on a million light years away. It doesn't actually matter to me currently. When I pass, then yes, that does matter, but I'm sure I'll probably find the information out there. Like, that's what I was thinking. It was very adamant that I didn't need to take any more. I didn't need to have a higher dose. I, like, 1.5 grams was perfect for me. That's what it was sort of telling me. And yes, part of me was scared at, at the same time, but also the most important part of me was, it, you don't need to know that right now. And it's kind of like leveling. And the best way I explained it to one of my friends was, I've got a Formula One game on my phone. And when you win a race, you get a point. You get a certain amount of points. Now, every time you get an amount of points, you can level up. and. The point is, you don't race against people that are on level 50 when you're on level two. So you don't necessarily need to even figure out all that stuff at level 50 until you get to level 50. And this doesn't mean you're unadvanced, doesn't mean I'm unadvanced because I know a hell of a lot about how to live happy, free, and, and truly a great life. And that's what I'm living right now. I'm living a, an amazing life. So. It's not that I don't know enough, but it was like, no, no, you need to master self here. Don't try and master the spirituality side of things to the point where you are so spiritually advanced, but you're so three-dimensionally de-advanced, unadvanced. I'm gonna show you a video here of me actually on the mushrooms. Now there's a few different clips that I'm gonna take from it because it's a total of seven minutes of me talking. If you wanna watch the whole thing, put it in the comments below and I will just upload them individually just so that you can watch the whole thing if you really are interested in that, just put it down below. I wanna watch the video, whatever, I don't care. You tell me, you let me know what you want and I can do that. But I'm gonna put a few clips of it, of some of the best bits that I think were really uh, eye-opening for me because I just had so many revelations of just like, why don't we just love ourselves unconditionally like a parent loves a child who literally shits itself? Why can't we love ourselves that much? So unconditionally that it doesn't matter if you screw up, it doesn't matter if you mess up, it doesn't matter if you do something wrong, you can still love yourself unconditionally. I was like, why do you, why do you love a kid when it shits itself? Literally, it stinks of shit, but you still love it unconditionally. Why can't you love yourself when you metaphorically yourself and you screw up or you end a relationship or you do something wrong and you mess up? You love yourself like you would love a child. Like, if you can really feel that love that you have for a child. Like, I've not had a child. I'm looking forward to having kids one day. But if you can really, if you can really love yourself like you love a child, what do you think it would be like to love a child? Because I, I, I can't imagine it fully. Actually, I can. I can, I can imagine how I love my dog. Like she's a little child, and I treat her like a child. So I kind of understand it, but it's, well, I suppose I do understand it because it's the same. You'd be different. Yeah, that's fine. It would be different. <laughs> yeah, it will be different. <laughs> and again, you know, you, you cannot explain the experience. Yes! Experience it. <laughs> so once you finally experience something... Yeah. Stop trying to explain shit. <laughs> Stop trying to explain shit. Just f***ing go... So we, we were saying that earlier, it's like, you just got to go and try shit. The more shit you try, eventually you get there. We, what were we talking about? We were talking about like... Was it business? Yeah, it could be business too. It's anything. Even like weight loss. Making it. Making it, we're just making it's it in success. In success, okay. Success. Oh, that's it. 
So we were literally, so ironically, we were over at like this point on the beach, somewhere, somewhere over there, somewhere over there. We were walking and we were just saying how there was sort of the end of the road and we were like, and we, we, because we were on mushrooms, we were like, I feel like there's a quest and my mind was saying, I need to come here. I love this bit of the beach. It's my favorite part of the beach. And then we said about how we just, we, we're just those people that just don't give up. <laughs> and we were like, should we just sit here? And we were like, no, nah, no, nah, let's keep going. And then we got to another bit of the beach. We're like, let's just go over there. No, no, no. let's just keep going. Let's we keep going. Go yeah, we need to go there. And we had to come here. I don't know what it was. And yeah, just the just the idea of coming the here. Stubbornness. The stubbornness that we have. The stubbornness that we have to f***ing succeed. In whatever we do is what I'm so grateful for. Because, bro, some people don't have that. Yeah. I will not. Give up until I've got a Lamborghini, until I've got the perfect wife. But when I say perfect, I don't mean she has to be per like just perfect for me. Do you know what I mean? Um, perfect. Like shit's gonna happen. And I don't expect it not to happen. But I refuse to settle. You know what I mean, I refuse to settle. And also things like, why do people worry so much? Why do we worry about the little things in life? And I, had, I came up with an amazing metaphor, which I thought was amazing. I still think it's quite a good metaphor, to be honest. And I was laying down on the towel next to Matteo, and I just said, oh, my pockets are so full, I need to empty them. And I just went, that's such a good metaphor for life. So people in life walk around with so much shit in their pockets, and we were just sitting here, me and Matteo were just sitting here, having a conversation, just having a cool conversation. Look, we're both wearing white as well. I feel like an angel. <laughs> Um, we were having a cool conversation, we were, I was just saying like, my pockets are so full, I need to empty my pockets. And I was like, that's such a metaphor for life, like, just empty your pockets. Empty your pockets. You don't need to carry all that shit that you're walking around with. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, that goes back to what we said earlier, programming. You can carry too much shit. shit. Bro, we carry way too much shit. Every night when you get home, you empty your pockets, you empty your bag, you empty your purse, whatever, whatever you, where you carry all your, your stuff. You empty them every day. You make sure there's nothing in them when you put them in the washing machine. But yet we do not empty our minds every day. Well, I personally do. But a lot of, I say a lot of people don't empty their minds every day. They don't clear shit out effectively. They don't let go of all that stuff because they don't know how to. And one of the greatest ways to start is with meditation. And, and that's what it was saying to me, it was so clear. And then I was asking, like, how do I help more people? And that's a question I ask myself every single day. How can I help more people? How can I really impact and change a lot of lives? And now I've got it. I know exactly what I need to do. Help you remove stress from your life. So that is what I'm here to do. And if you want me to help you remove stress, I can help you remove stress in a very quick amount of time. In literally 30 days, you can be completely stress-free by removing external stress and internal stress. And I can guide you through the whole process. So if you want that, send me a text. Head over to my website and send me a text and we can speak. Yeah, you know he said earlier about how if I get a Ferrari, I'm gonna use that Ferrari. I'm not gonna leave it in the garage. Bro, I get this body. I got a sporty model. I got the Lamborghini. <laughs> Like, bro, imagine you started seeing shit like that. Bro, I've already got a Lamborghini. I am a Lamborghini. If I train myself enough, I can become a Lamborghini. Why do I need to sit in a Lamborghini? You know what I mean? I am a Lamborghini. Or I can make a Lamborghini. I'm not already a Lamborghini. Because like you said, a baby is, let's face it, a baby is a Prius. <laughs> then you go through life, so maybe you turn into a bus, you get a bit fat. Then you start to turn into a Porsche, then you turn into a Lambo. I'm just talking about languages, I love, I love cars. But yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's no way that I mean, the possibility to build yourself into a lamp. Yeah, but well, I, I forget that I'm recording. Right, well, we, uh, we need to record this conversation. Like, maybe, maybe right now you are a Ford Fiesta or a... No, right now I'm a Lambo. No, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I know you're a Lambo. I'm just saying, maybe, you know, you, you can find yourself being a, a Ford uh, a Fiesta, Ford yeah. Fiesta. That's okay. But that's okay. You can become a Lamborghini if you, yeah. work, if you work on it. It tastes better when you have it. Bro. <laughs> it does. When I, when I bought this phone, when I bought my uh, office, when I built my office, when I did all that shit, bro, I'm fing proud of myself. I fing did that shit. I'm proud that I did that. And yeah, no one can ever take that feeling of proudness away from me. Regardless of what you do, you know, it can make me feel not proud because I'm proud.
proud to be me. <laughs> because when I was laying on the beach, I was just sitting there, I was laying there thinking, and I was like, bro, why am I so happy? I'm so happy because I don't care about anything else right now. I'm so present here, going back to this, I'm so present here right now that I don't need to worry about anything else. I don't have to worry about anything else. Yes, of course, there's still things I have to worry about. I have to pay rent, I have to pay for food, I have to buy all my stuff, I have to still live. Worrying about doing it isn't gonna make it easier. It's actually gonna make it worse. And ironically, one of my friends, Jovan, I was chatting to him, he came over from Puerto Vallarta, shout out to Jovan, an incredible guy. And we were chatting about this specifically, and he was saying, like we were chatting about stress specifically. It was after my trip, like I, I had a conversation with him, he's done a lot of mushrooms and I was sort of asking him a few questions and all that. And I spoke to him and I said, if we just remove stress from our life, it solves all of our problems and it makes us so happy. And I said, what makes you so happy? And he said the exact same thing. It was like, well, I don't stress about the little thing. He had a lot of money tied up in a PayPal account and they, they, they paused the account because there was so much money in it that they deemed it as fraudulent, even though none of it was, it was all legit. He had to pay his staff, his dirty staff, and pay for rent for the office that Monday, it was Friday. Over the weekend, he could have stressed, he could have got pissed off, he could have got frustrated, he could have got annoyed at everyone, he could have started shouting and screaming and getting wound up. But he said, he was like, I just didn't worry. Like, I had a thousand pounds in the account, that couldn't have paid for anything, literally nothing. I needed the money, and there was, there was a lot of money, like a lot of money. And he just said, I just didn't worry about it. I didn't worry that it wasn't gonna happen because I knew either way, if it comes on Monday or it doesn't come on Monday, it's not gonna change the outcome. I can either get worried while waiting for the outcome to happen, or I can just, stay the same and just not worry about it. That moves me to an analogy that I thought about ages ago about imagine you're waiting in a restaurant for your food and the food's gonna take an hour to come. Now you know it's gonna take an hour. You could be in that hour worried, pissed off and frustrated or you could be present, loving, kind, present with, with those that you're with. Whether you're on your own, you can just sit there and co conversate with other people, speak like, I don't know, men mental, blah, 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 mentally journal. All these other things that you can do, think, create your life, visualize, all that kind of stuff. Either way, your food's gonna take an hour to come. So do you spend that hour frustrated and pissed off and getting angry, and then when you eat your food, not appreciating it as much? Or do you just accept that it's going to be an hour? And that's a great metaphor for life in general because what's gonna happen is gonna happen. You, you're gonna be successful at this point in your life. Do you get pissed off until you're successful? Or do you just stay happy and peaceful until you're successful? because the choice is yours. And that's something that I've been doing recently, and this is something that I've been explaining to a lot of people, is you need two dream lives. One, an extravagant dream life that you can really work towards and something that's a material dream life. If you want it, you may not want it. And then a second one, a basic dream life. And I say you always need at least a basic dream life. For me, this is my basic dream life, what I'm doing today. I'm working online, I'm by the beach, I'm in Mexico, I'm in the sun. That's the four sort of things, well, Mexico isn't necessary, but it's just, by the beach, in the sun, working online, working my hours. It's the most important things for me. So while I'm working towards, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I want a Lamborghini. I want a Ferrari, I want a massive house, I want a 10 million pound house, I want all that stuff. While I'm working to that, I might as well live a basic dream life that doesn't cost me anything, that doesn't take anything from me. I can go to the beach, I can meditate, it's free. All the stuff that I do is free. The only things I pay for really is a gym, food and like stuff for my for my work and investing some money and stuff like that but why don't we just live this life before we get to the other place and while we're working towards it we're already happy so then regardless you're going to be happy i'm going off on a tangent here but anyway back to the sort of the experience me and mateo were just having such amazing and profound conversations of just like why do we do some things like why do we worry so much and it's all based on our programming i know exactly why i worry so much which then makes me ask myself questions every single day now if i want to go let's say there's like I used, to, I used to never talk to people now when i'm in mexico i just chat to random people and i just thought well why worry about that anymore and just learn to chat to people and it's been easier for me to do that i, I just question myself every single day and i said this to my clients if you just question yourself every single day of the things you're struggling with eventually you're going to get to where you want to be but the whole experience itself wasn't like out of this world and it wasn't, but it was telling me it doesn't need to be out of this world. Because yes, you can go out of this world and you can understand like the actual makeup of energy, but just because you know it, that doesn't change anything. If you know how to use energy, which you can learn in a book or you can learn through meditation, you don't necessarily need to have these profound interdimensional trips and meeting aliens and meeting God and all that, you don't need that. It's really inspired me to want to use and one day create a retreat center where we microdose 
with psilocybin, but also use hypnosis and, and like integrate all of it because not everyone needs it, but some people do. They don't necessarily need it. I say actually a lot of people in the world do need it. Don't necessarily have to have it, but if you want it, it's still there. And that's what I really want to create because it was such a great and profound experience. Even though I was scared, even though I was nervous, I still went into it. I still enjoyed myself. Um, my legs were really aching. That was a really weird part. My legs started to ache. My eyes watered a little bit. Um, I'd get a little bit hot. Everything was like, ooh. And I remember I went into a shop to buy a drink and I'm looking at the card machine and the whole card machine was just like waving like that. And I'm like, oh my God. And as soon as I went back outside, nature calms everything right down again. As soon as you go into like 3D world and you start to go into shops and you start to go and do three dimensional things, it made it weird, it made it different. I didn't really like that bit, but what I did like was the insight. And it gave me so much information. It gave me so much information. I'm so grateful and I'm so happy. I'm so glad I did it. I'm so glad I did it. And I feel like it doesn't have to be so ridiculously intense to have these trips and to get high because that wasn't my intention with it. My intention was to really ask questions and find messages. So that's exactly what I did. You don't need to take these massive doses to have these experiences. And some people may want to, they may want to, they may have, have done what they want to do in this sort of the 3D, they've sort of done what they needed to do. But in order for me to do what I need to do, I don't need to right now have those spiritual experiences. Because I thought about it, my, my journey sort of backwards. I did all the spiritual, wanting to be a monk, ayahuasca, all that stuff before I actually really delve deep into business. Usually it's the other way around. People make it financially successful, then they sort of go into the spiritual stuff. And it's sort of taken me back from being that, if I, if I look at it, I was a massive pushover back then, and I wanted to be kind, and I even got it tattooed on my ankle, be kind. But you can still be kind and not a pushover at the same time, but back then I was a pushover, if I'm honest. So, yeah, the whole experience was crazy. The whole experience was amazing, and I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Like, like I said, I, I, my experience wasn't anything ridiculous out of this world. It really was just revelations and just insight into why try and be someone else? You don't need to be someone else. I would not change who I am with anyone because I'm so lucky to be me. You start off somewhere and then you eventually build up to becoming the best, the most powerful. And that's down to your health, your wealth, and your relationships with people. Like, do people like you? Do you like people? Do you have great people in your life? And you don't need loads of people, but just great people. Are you financially wealthy in your standpoint? You don't need millions and millions of pounds. You may just need 50 grand a year. You may need 20 grand a year. I don't know what your budget is. And then are you healthy? Like, are you actually living here in the 3D? Because let's face it, I could have understood all that spiritual stuff, which one day I know I will go to that, but right now it doesn't actually, I don't need to right now. That's what it was saying to me. You don't need to know this. Like it's irrelevant for where you want to be on your journey currently. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be eventually? Like that's, that's, that's eventually gonna happen. Like don't worry about that yet. And it just chilled me out to go, huh, cool. I'm just present. Like we weren't on our phones, we were just present in nature, feeling the sand, looking at the sky, appreciating nature, appreciating the waves, seeing. Oh my God, watching waves was insane. It was like every wave was like, oh, every wave was a wave of energy and it was really weird. Really weird, but really cool at the same time. But what I'm trying, my point is, was you don't need to have all these external things to get what you want to feel because all you really want is when you sit in the Lamborghini is to feel successful, is to feel proud that you've made it. What if you felt, felt proud that you made it already? And I said, and I said this to Mateo, I was like, look, I've not made millions yet, but damn, I'm proud to be, to do what, uh, to have done what I've done. I'm so proud of myself. Proud to be me. <laughs> so I don't actually need to make millions to be proud. I can already feel those emotions right now. And that's what it always comes down to is what can you feel right now? Because there's something you want to feel when you reach X. If you can feel that right now, currently, you actually bring X faster to you because you're, 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 you're living that energy of it. So that was just everything that came up and I'm sort of just throwing information at you here because that's how it came. It was like, I would sit there and I'd think of something and it would come to me, the answer would come and then this would happen and then this would happen. And I messaged two individuals um, while I was doing this. I messaged one of my friends, Layla, and I just sent her a message um, just to tell her how grateful I was uh, for our friendship and stuff like that. And I messaged someone else as well. And it was very, it was just a very profound experience and. I, I would recommend it. I would definitely recommend you, you do some research on it first, but there's so much you can get from it, but you don't need to do it. So don't feel like you have to. You could just use hypnosis. You could just use meditation. That's my personal preference. But I think every now and again, like someone said to me, the, 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 the one way to save the planet would be remove humans 
or give every single human on the planet a, a hero dose of magic mushrooms, which I would, I would agree with, because you would then get people to open up and see what the world really is and realize that we're nothing and everything at the same time. So be good to the earth. Don't, don't throw litter on the floor. Don't, don't do all this stuff. Like, how can you help more people? How can you live a better life? There's things that we need to cut out. There's things that we need to stop getting addicted to, all this kind of stuff. And it just opens you up to a whole new way of thinking. You see life through a diff literally a different lens. So when you come back around, everything is kind of different and different in a good way. And again, I didn't personally have a bad trip. I had a really good trip. So some people that have a bad trip, I can't speak for that. It was really fun. It was really informative. And, and I don't, actually, I don't want to say it was fun. Well, it was, it was very fun. But it's definitely not something that you should just do recreationally. It's something that you should do with intention. And that's exactly what it was. For me, it was, I wanted to do mushrooms. I wanted to do mushrooms. And one of my friends, well, my friend Mateo messaged me literally the next day saying, I've got some mushrooms, do you want to do it? And I was like, that's a universal sign. I'm going to do it. And there I was. And that, that was what it was. But it was a very good experience. I definitely recommend it. If you want any more information, definitely, if you want me to post the full videos of me talking while I'm on uh, psilocybin, let me know and I'll post a whole new video. Just put it in the comments below. And if you want to work with me, if you want to get some hypnosis, and you want to make these life-changing results, because like I said, you don't actually need the psilocybin to make the life-changing results. You just need to have a highly emotional state with the insight and that combines together to give you the learning which again makes you change makes you let go makes you release makes you reduce stress completely and i can help you reduce all your stress in 30 days because you've probably mastered like watching this video you've probably mastered the the, the career side of things the money side of things all that kind of stuff and because you've mastered that you haven't actually had time to work on yourself so you don't need to spend years because we can do it in 30 days just drop me a message head to my website, send me a text and we can chat and then we can schedule in the call and we can really work something out. But other than that, subscribe.